Hey everybody, Wandering Kid here. Welcome back to my Subnautica playthrough. Recently got done uh, losing that wreck, or dying in it anyway, out here by Life Pod 17. And well, there's some decades and stuff like that down there, but I'm just enjoying the view at the moment. Just watching the uh, thermal vent over there, or it might be a magma vent. Just sitting there blowing away. But in the meanwhile, uh, while you guys were gone, I sat down and I took care of some business with supplies. Picked up some co more copper, picked up a couple of fire wiring kits, uh, power cells, things like that. So, let's take a look. Oh, also, I now have lunch. Just to make life a little easier for me. But over here, on my fabricator, the resources of interest are the titanium ingot. So, 10 units of regular titanium when you break down... Uh, metal salvage or look for copper. Ten of them create you an ingot. And glass is some extra quartz. Found a bunch of that. Over here, uh, your batteries, which you're familiar with, are copper and two acid mushrooms. To create a power cell, it's two mushrooms and some more rubber. And down here, uh, I'll show you guys in a bit, but I picked up a second high capacity O2 tank. We'll care about that in a little while. However, in the meanwhile, we're going to be looking to build out a couple of things. I want to build the Seamoth. Uh, it's the next upgrade for our general exploration and things like that. And to do that is to build a mobile vehicle bay, which requires some titanium ingots, some lubricants, and a power cell. So we'll get that started up. And also, one of the other things I was able to get my hands on is a battery charger, which I want to install. Let's put it over here. So we'll come in here. And remember, I found a battery charger. Now that's a wiring kit, a copper wire, and some t extra titanium. I'll just plug you in here for the moment. Oops. And over here, I think, do I still have some extra batteries? Uh, oh, I got a full one. Well, let me see. Let me check my equipment here. Uh, nope, I'm out. Okay. Well, I've been making a lot of power cells, so I've been using up my existing batteries. I thought I had some more. There's another power cell. There's my batteries. 10% and 29%. So once you've built your battery charger, open it up by left clicking. And over here, my little 10%er, I'll just left click, we'll put them in. And over here, you can see that it starts charging. It's going to start using my solar power to do so. And these guys will charge up here eventually. They take a little bit, but it's not too bad. Another thing I uh, made the equipment to... <laughs> Let's start that again. The other thing I got enough supplies for to make was a rebreather. Now over here, I think I've got some... Yep, I've got plenty of mesh left over. I also ran into some more sulfur while I was out in case I decided to use it. But over here, our rebreather is another wiring kit, so more silver. And our fiber mesh, this will make the rebreather. Now again, the rebreather is just to help you not lose more oxygen while in deeper areas. So over here is our rebreather. You can swap it in like that by just left clicking on it. I'm going to leave that in on the radi radiation suit for now, but I may keep it, bring it with me when we go back to this wreck, but I want to make sure that I don't run into the radiation while I'm traveling. And over here you can see we've got this mobile vehicle bay over here. Let's slot that in a spot. And the last thing we want to do is go build the Seamoth. So let's go find a place to drop the mobile vehicle bay. Now you can pick up and put down the mobile vehicle bay, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to make it a little more easy. Uh, let's go into the deep, a little deeper out. Wander out this way a bit. Yeah, that should be plenty. Yeah, just want to give myself a little room. And we'll get away from our stalkers so they don't start chewing on things. Oh, this looks perfect. This should be fine. So out here, we'll grab our mobile vehicle bay, right click, and it releases. Up it goes. It's almost like it floats or something. Alright, now. Let's hop on the vehicle bay. Use vehicle bay. 
Vehicles are over here. Seamoth is over here. Whoops, I forgot to grab my lead. Let me go snag that. My bad. Sorry. Back in a sec. So, yep. Whoops, sorry about that. We'll hop back into the mobile vehicle bay. Climb up. Use the vehicle bay. Now, you'll also notice the prawn suit is an option here that could be made, but I don't have the ingredients yet. So right now we just have the Seamoth. The Seamoth is a fast, safe mode of transport, but remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. I think our poor soul has had so much swimming at this point, he's good to go. Alright, so we'll hop off the vehicle bay. Now you can pick it back up. Uh, let's see. Uh, is it? Yeah, okay, so when you grab this, I think you can take it apart again. Um, I forget how to grab it. Hang on. No, 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 wrong button. It's not that. There is a way to pick it up. I just forget what it is. Oh, there we go. So go around the back of it, and over here you'll see back of the mobile vehicle bay. It goes back into your inventory. Now, where is that Seamoth? There you are. Hello, Seamoth. How are you? So this is a Seamoth. It's a one-man ship. Right now its crush depth is 200 meters. So if you go below 200 meters, it starts taking damage. And there's no attachments on it yet. We don't have any kind of boosters on it. So when I say boosters, what I'm talking about are things like uh, storage boost storage boosters you'll get more storage on the craft there's no storage until you've got some of those so they're basically um advances welcome aboard captain so you'll notice first thing up it's got oxygen inside next thing up okay on the top you've got a depth gauge and a compass over on the right you have how much power you have how much damage you've taken and what the temperature is in degrees Celsius. Uh, nothing on the left. Now on the bottom, there are those four little dots uh, underneath E to exit. So when you hit E, you pop out of the sea moss. Sea moss. You hop in, those come up. Those are your upgrades. We don't have any yet. So if we take a look around, you can see that we have uh, different beacons up that we can use for later. But of important part, full oxygen. Now your oxygen will start to, de to degrade if you run out of power on the CMOS. To upgrade your CMOS, you come over here and you come around the back and you see this little pontoon thing back in the back? You come in here and you left click it to activate and then you can activate it with more power cells or you can completely unload the power cells. But basically we'll just leave that active for now we're going to need some more, and we're going to need some rechargers here eventually, if we don't find a moon pool soon enough. But we'll see how things go. Let's head down towards base. Now you'll notice, I have headlights. Woohoo, gummy. Sometimes you'll want them, sometimes you won't. Uh, some of the creatures are more likely to attack you if you have lights on than if you don't, but usually you need to be able to see. Apparently I need some lunch. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you, which I thought was interesting. So you'll notice we're at 28 degrees Celsius right now, right? Okay. There's our base, and over here is the uh, thermal vent. There's the vent. And as we climb in, watch, this, watch the heat go up. Goes all the way down down here into the 70s and you'll also notice the sea moth is not being damaged by doing this now if you actually touch it I believe that's when you get damage uh, nope okay not here there are places you can touch and get damage and it hurts but for the moment yeah 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 I know I need to go get lunch uh, try not to dent your sea moth too much it doesn't like it Thankfully, it's relatively easy to repair. So here's my repair tool. Just run over to it, right click, and clean it up. Simple and easy. So one of the things you'll want to do is when you're running around in your Seamoth, you'll always want to 
uh, run around with a repair tool. Simple enough. Okay. So, one seam off, one base. Upgrades! All right, time for me to go grab lunch. All right, so we got lunch done. So over here in my equipment locker, I'm going to shove in the mobile vehicle bay because I won't need that again for a while. I do want to grab my backup tank. Uh, now, this is where things start becoming uh, back and forth. Do we want to keep carrying the Sea Glide with us or do we want to store it? Uh, it's powerful in both directions. It's a choice for both ideas. Now remember, right now our Seamoth has a crush depth concern. And we've also got a rebreather that we need to get, use for when we get underneath 100 meters. Right now I think I'm going to carry both of them. And eventually once we get enough uh, upgrades on our Seamoth and we're able to go deeper with it normally, we'll start running more of the Sea Glide. But for now I'm going to hang on to it and bring all my equipment. I do want to drop off this extra titanium if I can, somewhere in here. I've just got stuff everywhere at this point. Um, I apparently have an extra wiring kit. Okay, cool. I'm done. Wait, why do I have an extra wiring kit? Did I not make something? If I come in here to my blueprints... Oh, I never made the propulsion cannon. Haha, <laughs> that would do it. Uh, titanium and battery. Okay, we can do that. So the propulsion cannon is something we're going to want eventually. Um, I don't know if I have any batteries left. I think I've used them all. So let's go see how... We'll go snag our uh, battery charger. Just snag one off of that. I'm going to clip it. And now... Uh, where is that? That's in the fabricator. Over here. Personal. Tools. Propulsion cannon. So there's an upgrade to it called the Repulsion Cannon, but we'll care about that in a little while. And here's the uh, Propulsion Cannon. Pulls a gravity... Warps gravity to push and pull objects. That's on my four spot right now, and you'll notice it's a larger piece of equipment. It's up, up here. Oh, of course it's dark. But watch this. So these guys have been being really annoying lately, right? So watch this. We come in here. I'm going to get one to set off. And you can send it out. Uh, let's do that with something a little less cranky. There we go. I grabbed a peeper. Now I can just eat the peeper. So now he's in my food. Now we're going to kick him back out for a second. Up you go, buddy. I'm not done with you. Now if I hook him with the repulsion cannon, I can now shoot him off, and he goes flying. And now we have a dead peeper. Okay, we're going to kick him out again. That should get him awake. Okay, he's just stunned. Now if we whack him, he pretty much explodes himself into nothing. But this can be really handy if you start getting worried, because now you can just start grabbing, you know, water fish or whatever else you needed to hang on to when nobody was looking. So this is pretty nice to just grab food sources, things like that as you're going through. In general, you won't use it too much. As you can see, I've already used 20% of its power, but it is a powerful tool. So for example, if we hook in here, can I drag it out? Mm, ah, you don't want to get out of there. That's a sea glide fragment. I wanted to see if I could hook it. I, I tried this once before. I think. It, oh, there we go. Uh, I just flung it somewhere. Not good. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Thankfully, I did not need that anymore. So be careful with that theory. Okay, so here's what happens when you have two tanks. You notice I'm sitting on 21 units of oxygen, and I've been using my first tank. If I flip the sec second one in. Should have swapped in, and now I'm at 102. And it's going down at 3 per second. And I've still got... That one's empty, so I was using my personal O2. It used the tank second. So we're going to go try something out here. Uh, we're going to close that. We're going to go to air. Okay. Hop up here. 
Bring it back on. You'll notice the O2 tank is empty again. You gotta swap, swap them to get air back. Now, if we pull the tank off completely, we have 45 air naturally, 135 specifically. So I'm going to purposely dump some air. So hold on. Actually, while we're rolling around here and I've got the repulsion cannon, I'm gonna go see if I can annoy a stalker. Since we've got to blow some oxygen off anyway while I do this. Here, stalker, where are you? I hear one, there he is. Uh, okay, it will not grab the stalker. So, uh, won't do anything. What's going on? Should we, uh, these guys. Okay, so like that, gotten snagged. Throw you off. Grab another one. Shoot him at the stalker. See if he likes that. He didn't care. But I can't seem to be able to grab the stalker. So it's too big to be able to repulsion cannon him. Yep, he does not want to play this. Okay, well, that's good to remember. So we'll just turn that off for the moment. We'll come over this way. And I'm literally just wait waiting on time. I want to get under 45 oxygen left over. I'm going to sw swim out over here. What do we got over here? Oh, another sea moth fragment. Okay. <laughs> I never even saw that thing. But while I'm here, I'm going to grab some salt just to be able to make sure I've got plenty of water. And since I'm just killing time anyway. 30 seconds. Wait for it. Always need more copper. Okay, so we're at 18. I'm underwater. 15. Wait for 9. Okay, it's nine, and I flip it in. So there's my other 90, back from my other tank. This tank is now empty. So that helps you understand how those work. I have ran into concerns in some other uh, usages, and I'm not sure why, where I felt like my tanks were draining on their own before I used them. It may be that I was using the smaller tanks and I was not paying enough attention to the difference between using a tank and the base 45 points that the character uses. But this should give us a much more depth when we go wreck hunting. So there we go. And we'll grab my sea glide, just hop back over this way. Now, one other thing I want to touch on. Welcome aboard, Captain. Let's say I have no batteries. For some reason or another, I'm just completely out of batteries. If I grab my repulsor, which I know we just drained, and I hit R to recharge, um, not recharge it, reload it. Uh, try that again. And you use your left and right arrows. You can unload the battery like so. Now the repulsor is empty. If I come in here to the battery charger, I can just shove it in. I let it charge while I'm not using it. Obviously, of course, I'm going to go grab the fresh one and have it go grab the new battery. But I also don't need the repulsor right now. Repulsors can be kind of helpful. They can help you get some of the stuff out of wrecks and just get things out of the way. Uh, but take a look at how much stuff I'm currently storing on my uh, inventory list. Even knocking off all this extra salt, I'm s still used over half of my resource. Oh, I'm sorry, half of my inventory that I've got. So it's kind of a matter of how much, how many things you really want to take with you. I'm gonna use these. No, nope, I don't want to cook the bladder fish. Get some water up. Like so. All right, let's drink our water. Okay, so I think this is a good place to break because our next step will be to head out uh, back to, back towards, where are you? Uh, Life Pod 3 and the wreck that had killed me once already, I'm not done with you.
Come here, Rick. Now you'll notice this tank is empty. Remember to refill your tanks if you would like to have some O2 on you. So that's where we're going to be going. We're going to be heading out here. We're going to hop on our seam off so that we don't have to worry about going in and out of 100 meters depth. We can just hop in and out of the seam off and work our way in over by the shallows. Uh, that's actually Life Pod 3. That's the one I don't want to go to. Uh, out here, that's Life Pod 17. That's where we're going. That's where the other wreck was. And at some point, as you can see, I've got some radio transmissions that I've been ignoring because I'm not done with 17 yet. And I tend to go through them one at a time and it makes things more convenient for everybody. But I think, as I said, that will be the end of this one. I'm going to put away my brand new repulsion cannon until I need it because I want the space. And I will see you on the next episode where we go back and round two with that wreck and try not to die this time. But this time I think we've got a lot better gear. So, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Please leave a like or a comment if you've been enjoying it.